Let's look in detail at creating a simple VHDL module. So at the top of our file, we're going to have some required library declarations. So library IEEE just says that there is this IEEE library that's going to contain a bunch of sub-libraries. And then we'll want to use IEEE.standardlogic1164.all. So VHDL by default does not have a very useful type for representing bits, which seems a little bit weird, but that's the way the language has developed. And so if you want the basic standard logic type that allows you to represent bits, uh, then you need to import the standard logic 1164 library. Then you'll often want the numeric standard library uh, for just creating things with basic logic you want, but as, you won't need it. But as soon as you have numbers, you will want the numeric standard library as well. Next, we have the entity declaration. So sort of like in C or many other languages, you can declare a function and then you define that function separately. So the entity is sort of like the function declaration. We're describing the inputs and outputs to this particular module or this particular entity. And so with this entity, we can think about it, its ports. So it has three ports here called A, B, and Y. A and B are specified to be inputs, and then Y is an output. So anytime you see an entity declaration, you should think about it. We're just defining some box. And this box is called AND gate. And it has two inputs called A and B. And we'll discuss types in more detail later, but for right now, these, these two, the types of these inputs are standard logic, meaning that they're just a single bit. Uh, they can take the values one or zero. Standard logic also lets us specify undefined values and high Z values and, and represent contention and so forth. And then it has one output, which is called Y. Okay, so the entity declaration is describing this box here. So it hasn't said anything about what's inside the box, but it has just described the name of the box and all of its inputs and outputs and their type. And then finally, we can fill in the architecture, which defines what goes inside that box, how the internals of that box operate. So in VHDL, we do that starting with the architecture keyword. Then you're gonna pick some name. So here I've chosen the name synth referring to synthesis, that this is an architecture I could synthesize into a, an actual hardware design. If I was doing something that was only for simulation, I might pick sim um, or whatever. Uh, so VHDL is a little unusual in that it allows you to specify multiple implementations for the same entity. So this is sort of like saying I've, I've got one particular function definition and I'm gonna have multiple implementations of that function. Um, not, not so much like function overloading where I have implementations that do different things, but I have actually have multiple implementations that do the same thing. And you might ask, why would you ever want to do that? And we won't use it very often, but it could be useful, for example, if you have one implementation that's good for simulation. It was quick to write and it runs fast on a computer, but it perhaps uses things that you can't actually synthesize into hardware. And maybe you have a separate, um, simula some separate synthesizable architecture that can actually be turned into to physical logic gates. And so you might swap those back and forth depending on whether you're doing a sim simulation that you want to run quickly or whether you're actually trying to synthesize something to hardware. Either way, so you've got some name for your architecture and then we're, this architecture is referring to the entity that we defined up here. So this is your chosen name for the entity, and then we'll use the corresponding name down there when we're picking out the architecture. And then finally, inside the begin and end statements here is just the body of the architecture. It's just telling the synthesis tool how the inputs and outputs interact, how the outputs are computed from the inputs.
And so in this case, uh, we just have y is assigned the value of a and b. And so what this will just generate, again, we've got our box here. And we say that y simply gets the value of a and b. So we just can imagine an AND gate inside here. And coming out, that's y. And then a and b are just our inputs here. And they go into the AND gate. So that's the anatomy of a very simple AND gate module. And pretty quickly, we'll be building up to do more complex behavior inside the architecture and to be able to specify more complex types inside the ports in, in the entity declaration. So instead of just taking individual bits, very quickly we'll be able to take a, a bus, a collection of bits that represents a number uh, or um, perhaps a state that represents a, a particular a state or behavior of a more complex object and then operate on that in the architecture. So I encourage you to play around with this a little bit. VHDL Web will give you lots of practice um, filling in architectures and doing things, and as well as writing some entities yourself. Uh, play around with it until you get comfortable, but don't worry about memorizing all of the syntax. That's that's what cheat sheets are for. And again, you um, you won't succeed in this course or anywhere else based on your ability here to memorize syntax. You'll succeed based on your understanding of how to implement digital logic with the language.